Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC Interactomics course. In our previous lecture, we discussed about two self free expression systems. In our previous lecture, we discussed about two self free expression protein microarrays, namely protein in situ arrays and nucleic acid programmable protein arrays, PISA and NAPA. Today we will talk about multiple spotting technique. This is another approach which facilitates generation of high density protein microarrays by using self free expression system. In MIST approach both DNA and self free expression system are printed on chip surface. Two rounds of spotting is performed. In first spotting step addition of DNA template to the microarray solid support is performed and during second spotting cell free expression mixture is transferred directly on top of the first spot which contains DNA. The aim is to print DNA as well as cell free expression system so that after incubation protein can be directly synthesized on the same feature and one does not need to add or perform a separate step of cell free expression system. The proteins which are immobilized on the activated array surface after translation by means of a tag capturing agent or non specific ion interaction. In the multiple spotting technique or MIST, the first spotting step as shown in the slide involves addition of DNA template onto microarray support. After first spotting is performed, where self free expression mixture is directly transferred on top of the first spot. In this way, where two printing steps are involved on top of each DNA template, self free expression system is also printed. After incubation, both transcription and translation processes happen and proteins are synthesized which can be detected by detection antibodies. Overall in this technique the DNA template is spotted in the first step followed by the cell free lysate in the second step which is directly added on top of the first spot. The express protein is detected by using fluorescently tagged antibodies. The inventors of MIS technology reported that even 35 femtogram of PCR product was sufficient for expression and detection of wild type green fluorescent protein. The high density arrays containing 13000 spots per slide can be achieved by using MIST technology. Let us now discuss the working principle of MIST by showing this animation. Multiple spotting technique or MIST. In this technique, the first spotting step of the multiple spotting is capable of producing high density arrays. It involves addition of template DNA onto the solid array support. The template DNA can even be in the form of unpurified PCR product, which is one of the major advantage of using this MIST technique. The second spotting step involves addition of cell free lysate directly on top of the first spot. The transcription and translation can begin only after the second spotting step.
the protein expressed from the template DNA binds to the array surface by means of non-specific interactions, which is one of the drawbacks of this procedure. A detection antibody is specific to the protein of interest is added, which indicates that protein expression levels by using suitable fluorophore. There are various merits and demerits of using MIST technology. It involves unpurified DNA products that can be used as template source, which is not the case in NAPA. In this method, very high density protein arrays can be generated because the spot chemistry is not very complicated. The limitations of using this technique is that there is loss of signal intensity with prolonged incubation time of the arrays. Since in this case, even the cell free expression system are printed on top of the arrays, the stability could be one of the major issues. The non-specific protein binding as well as the overall process is more time consuming. These are some of the limitations of this technique. Let us now discuss DNA array to protein arrays or DAPA. The DAPA technique makes possible the repeated use of DNA template site for printing multiple rounds of protein arrays. So, from same DNA template multiple protein slides can be produced. In DAPA, the PCR amplified DNA fragments which encode tag proteins immobilized onto a nickel NTA coated slide and assembled face to face with another nickel NTA slide bearing protein tag capturing agent. The repeated use of same DNA template can be performed here and multiple protein arrays can be generated by using DAPA method. In DAPA method, the permeable membrane which contains cell free lysate which is positioned between two slides for these proteins to be diffused. Protein synthesis takes place on this membrane and then the synthesized protein diffuses from the membrane and then move on to the other slide for capture. The newly synthesized proteins penetrate the membrane and bind to the surface of capture slide. As can be seen in the slide, in DAPA the PCR amplified DNA fragments encoding the tag proteins are immobilized onto a nickel NTA coated slide and assembled face to face with another nickel NTA containing protein tag capture agent. In between these two slides, a permeable membrane containing cell free lysate is placed. The protein synthesis takes place from the immobilized DNA spots. The newly synthesized proteins can penetrate this membrane and bind to the surface of capture slide. In DAPA approach, the investigators produced an array of double hexahistidine tag GFP and data was found to be comparable with existing protein array technologies. With DAPA, it is possible to use same DNA template repeatedly to print multiple protein arrays. It has been shown that one can use this template for printing almost 20 arrays. So, let me now show you the working principle of DAPA in this animation. DNA array to protein array known as DAPA. In DAPA, the slides bearing the DNA template and the protein tag capturing agent are assembled face to face with a lysate containing permeable membrane placed in between. The expressed protein slowly penetrates the membrane and gets immobilized on the slide surface through its capture agent. 
the DNA template array can be reused several time by using this method. DAPA method provides few advantages as compared to the previously described methods. One could get pure protein because the protein is diffused from the membrane. The reusable DNA template which is able to print multiple chips by using this chemistry and of the source template which is DNA that array can be stored at room temperature for long duration. When there is a need for making the protein array, one can use the membranes with the lysate and then followed by generation of multiple protein arrays. However, there are certain limitations of using DAPA method including the broadening of spots due to diffusion. It is not ascertained if multimeric protein assemble effectively, it is also time consuming process. Let us move on to the latest technology which is Halotag arrays. The Halolink protein array systems have been developed by Promega company which combines few technologies together to create protein microarrays. First of all, it uses cell free expression transcription and translation system. It uses Halotag which is mutated hydrolase protein that forms a covalent bond with the halotag ligands. Thirdly, it uses polyethylene glycol coated glass slides activated with halotag ligand for a specific capture of proteins which are expressed by using cell free expression system. The halotag is a 33 kilodalton engineered derivative of bacterial hydrolase which is used to tag desired proteins. The proteins which are fused with halotag are expressed by using weed germ extract expression system or rabbit reticulocyte lysate and covalently captured onto PEC containing slides. These are then activated with halotag ligands. These halotag arrays achieve oriented capture of proteins and thereby ensures no loss of function or minimal loss of function. As shown in this slide, the polyethylene glycol coated slide can be activated using halotag ligands. The proteins are fused with halotag are expressed by using self free expression system and are covalently captured on polyethylene glycol coated glass slides. So, halotag method enables oriented capture of proteins. In a nutshell, the halotag fused protein is expressed as can be seen here and covalently captured on PEC coated slide and activation is performed by using halotag ligand. This provides very strong covalent interaction and minimizes loss of synthesized protein which usually occurs in other protein microarray based methods. In protein arrays one need to perform several washing steps. If the proteins or the molecules are bound on the surface with very strong interaction, then there will be minimal loss from the surface which can be achieved in this case by using halotag system. So, in halotag arrays, the capture chemistry which is based on binding of halotag protein with synthetic ligand that enables covalent and oriented capture of proteins on solid surface directly from the cell free expression based system. This method not only overcomes the limitation of protein purification, but also overcomes several other limitations which are commonly observed in any protein microarray technology. Now, let us discuss the working principle of halotag arrays in this animation. 
halo tag technique in halo tag technique the slide is activated with the halo tag ligand which captures the express protein through firm covalent interaction which prevents any material loss and ensures oriented capture of the protein the halo tag fuse protein is expressed by using lysate such as rabbit reticulocyte lysate rrl or wheat germ expression system and synthesized protein is covalently captured onto the array surface through the halo tag ligand the specific interaction ensures the oriented capture of protein and prevents any possible functional loss halo tag arrays have various advantages such as the strong covalent binding between the protein and the ligand no material loss occurs during washing steps because of very strong covalent interaction the proteins are captured oriented and there is no non specific adsorption due to pack coating the quantification is easy and one do not need a microarray printer to print the proteins on this chip because the commercial kit of halo tag arrays provide a gasket which can be used for printing the arrays however there are certain limitations of using halo tag arrays it has not been shown that a system cannot be used for high density arrays also few spots using the commercial gaskets have been shown so applicability of this technology for high density protein microarrays is yet to be seen high density arrays in theory are possible but one need to ensure that even at the high density these arrays function properly then there is a possibility of loss of function on binding to the halo tag these types of quality control checks have already been performed but more biological questions need to address however more biological questions need to address on these arrays before confidently applying these technology for the clinical applications in summary protein microarrays offer a range of diverse applications and are being adopted extensively for clinical and other biological applications the cell free expression system facilitate synthesis of several proteins in single reaction and produce proteins on demand and eliminate concerns of storage and protein instability several cell free systems have been used developed in the past decade and in the last two lectures we have discussed the working principles merits and demerits of some of these most promising self free expression based protein microarray systems in the next lecture we'll focus on one of the technology nucleic acid programmable protein arrays or napa and try to understand how to make the arrays and its application for various biological questions thank you